Don't turn the dial. You're now listening to the Safety Man Moving Safety Church Podcast. With your host, the Safety Man himself, Terry Gray. Greetings and salutations to all my safety soldiers and saints out there in the safety world. I want to take the time to welcome you guys to the first Safety Man Movement Safety Church Podcast. I'm glad you guys are here. I hope you guys are ready to just dive in with me in this session. This is the very first one, so I'm kind of excited about it, guys. But we're going to talk about exactly what is the purpose of Safety Church Podcast. What are we going to talk about? We're going to go over some things, um, just kind of sharing you. This is really my episode zero to kind of share with you guys what it is all about. Why am I doing this? And I hope you guys decide to hang around and listen in and come back for later episodes because I think it's going to be great. But let's jump into this. What's up, my fellow safety heroes? Again, how are you guys doing? Terry Gray here, and I'm so excited to have you guys here with me for my very first podcast with the Safety Man Movement called Safety Church. Yes, it is Safety Church. I call it Safety Church, you know, because when I go around the country and or around the world and I give my safety presentation and people always tell me and say, hey, man, I, wow, that was dynamic. That was incredible, man. I feel like I just got out of Safety Church. So let me take a moment to say to you guys, Welcome to Safety Church. I'm glad you guys decided to join us and I'm glad that you decided to be here. Since I launched this Safety Church thing, I guess that makes me your safety pastor. If you would, you could call it or you could even say that I'm here to preach the safety gospel to you guys. And I just wanted to take the time and share some things with you guys. Uh, First, just kind of introduce myself to you guys who I am. Again, my name is Terry Gray. I am a pipe fitter by trade. I'm a safety man by choice. I'm a preacher by calling, right? It's exciting to be here with you guys. It's exciting to share this message with you. And I want you to really know kind of where and how this all came together with the whole two things. So when I decided to create the safety man movement back in the year 2013, I knew I created it to for people to understand that, hey, I care for people. But in the background, in the back of my mind, it wasn't just about saving lives, but it was also about saving souls. So you'll see that statement, saving souls and saving lives, because they both go hand in hand. My goal was, again, to if I can or my the, the, the thought process that was in my head when I created the whole safety man movement and had a conviction and felt compelled to enter into the self safety realm was like, man, listen, if I can save a person, if I can help save somebody's physical life another day, that gives them another chance to hear the good news of the gospel. So if we can give them a chance to hear the gospel, then they can not only save their lives, but we can save their souls. And so that was always in the back of my mind as I was pursuing the whole safety man movement, which says that, hey, the safety man is no longer one individual, but many individuals that are one. Right. That whole thought process of, hey, the safety man is no longer one individual, but many individuals that are one came from an exchange that I had with a young man at my job. He's actually an older guy, but he's been in the shipyard for for a long time, right? And so while we were talking and he called me and said, hey, safety man, come here, I got to show you something. And I came over to him and, he, and it was a, a metal tag that was on the floor, no bigger than a credit card. And he was like, hey, man, there's a metal tag on the floor, on a metal floor. And he was like, somebody can slip on this and they could hurt themselves. And I was like, okay, so why you didn't pick it up? He's like, well, that ain't my job. Right. He was messing with me and giving me a hard time. But what I realized is that people really think that way and people really have that attitude of, hey, I'm not the safety man, so I don't have to be so concerned about safety or, hey, I'm not uh, the safety guy. So they don't pay me to be safe, which is a lie. Safety is a part of everybody's job description. So being safe is included in whatever you do. But my point was my thought was that people are not aware. People aren't even um, thinking a lot of times or even putting the two thoughts together that safety is your responsibility and it's something that you need to pay attention to and something that you need to absolutely commit to, right? And so from that, I was like, man, I don't want to be the person where everybody just thinks, um, hey, they go to safety, man, he's going to handle the situation or um, I don't I don't have any part to play in this role because we all know that every single one of us has a part to play 
and safety. It's all of our responsibility. And so the whole thought, the safety man is no longer one individual, but many individuals that are one came from the desire to make safety so common that you couldn't call me the safety man because everyone accepts the thought already of safety man. It's like going into a police station where you'll see a police officer. They won't talk to another police. They say, hey, police officer. He already knows he's a police officer. They'll call him by his name. Or you'll go into a school. You'll see teachers in there. And your teacher will say, hey, teacher. They already know the teachers. They'll say, hey, Mr. Gray, Mr. Lancaster, whoever you are, whatever you teach you are. They don't address you as, hey, teacher, because it's a known fact that everyone is a teacher. So I wanted it to be a known fact that everyone was the safety man. So you couldn't just call me safety man just because I look like uh, the safety man or just because it was my title because it by naturally it's everybody's title. So that was the goal. Say, I don't, I didn't want to be called safety man no more. I don't want you to call me safety man. I want you to call me by my name because everybody's a safety man. Not just me, not just you, but everybody. So let's get away from it. However, that totally backfired because everybody now calls me safety man more than they call me my own name. Like, hey, safety man. But what I had to realize is that I had to accept it because if I wanted everyone to accept the idea that we are all the safety man, that means I had to accept the self, accept the idea myself that I'm the safety man. So I had to go along with it. I had to be like, you're right. I am the safety man. I am the safety man. And I stayed that in throughout my presentations all the time. And I get others to quote it that I am the safety man woman or whatever you want to um, title it. I, it's me. I'm, I have ownership of safety. So I want to share with you guys um, a little bit of how a combination of safety man movement and safety church with the spiritual thing, how those things kind of connect. There's a scripture that I got. I want you guys to remember when it comes to the safety man movement and safety church, right? Again, my, the main statement that you'll hear me say of the safety man is no longer one individual, but many individuals that are one. Now in the Bible, first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, it tells us that we are all one body. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it to you. It's verse 12 and it's actually verse um, 21 as well. So I'm going to get that out if you want to get it out and, and turn to it. Again, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. And second Corinthians, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. And down in verse 20, not 21, verse 20, it says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Again, I'm telling you guys, safety and the scripture and Bible, it, it goes together. So this is going to be a pretty awesome uh, experience that we're going to have here that I hope you guys keep coming back to. So again, it's saying that the safety man is no longer one individual, but many individuals that are one. The same way the scripture says, but now indeed, in verse 20, there are many members, yet one body. So anyways, with that idea and that concept of everybody being a safety man, I personally had a conviction like, hey, man, I really care for people, man. I, I really have a care and a conviction for people because I know people hurt. I knew back in seventh grade that my job, my my um, my purpose was to encourage and inspire people way, way back in middle school when I was walking home one day. And I was like, man, I think somebody was crying on the bus one day and I said some things that made them feel better. And or. I was on the bus and just made everybody laugh. One of the two things, right? I can't really remember the right details, but I know when I was walking back down the street, back towards my house, I was like, man, this is, I love this. I love to encourage people. I love to make people feel better. I didn't have words for it like, or a title for it, like, hey, I'm an evangelist or hey, I'm a public speaker or a motivational speaker. I just knew, man, I wanted to make people feel better throughout their day. I wanted people to feel joy. I wanted people to be inspired. I wanted people to feel uh, that they could make it, that they could press on a little bit longer. I just knew at that point that I, that's, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make people feel better, right? And as my relationship with God grew, I realized, man, God, God loved me before I loved anybody else, right? So I had to go and share this love. And the safety was an avenue in which I could use to express God's love because I could care for people, not just their uh, attitudes, but their whole being, their whole life. It's a life and death experience. It's a life and death situation that we're dealing with here as safety professionals. So I was like, man, God, I, I, can, I can do this because I know that this job carries weight and it 
convicts me as well in my spiritual side, right? So again, as a minister, I've been in church for quite some time. Uh, I've grown up in church. We had a spurt where we weren't going to church, but then we went back into church and then I got out of church a little bit, but I always had that relationship with God. I always knew where I needed to return to, right? And I knew that something or whatever that I had to do within my life would include me sharing the good news of the gospel, that Jesus came and he died for you, your sins, that you may not die the second death, but you may live and have eternal life. And so I had that conviction. I was like, man, I know that this is part of the weight that I have to carry in my life, but I know that there's also some um, marketplace type of job that I have to do as well. But I would like for that job or whatever that I do to be able to reach people, but also um, create an avenue for me to share with them the good news of Christ. And so safety is just kind of a perfect meld between those two because I get to care for people. I get to talk to people. I get to motivate people. I get to try to change people's minds about the way that they were living. And again, it doesn't have to be me that even talks to people about the gospel, but everything that I kind of share is riddled with gospel um, and biblical uh, principles and biblical uh, thought processes and biblical um, references, right? Because it, it all kind of makes sense. There's four key things that I talk about with the Safety Men Movement. And these four things, they uh, resonate through everything that I do and that has anything to do with the Safety Men Movement. Like everything is literally broken down based on these four principles, okay? And the first principle is empathize. The second one is empower. The third is engage, and the last one is enlarge, right? So empathizing is really just caring for people, empowering, again, giving people the support that they need, empowering them and giving them knowledge and information, the things that they need to make them better, to be able to do better. Engaging, which is simply put, make the rubble meet the road, getting involved and doing things hands-on and enlarging, not just which means just not just doing things for yourself, but spreading it and letting other people get and join and be a part of it. And I believe that those four principles can help change your industry, can help change your company, can help change things. If you apply those things as a thought process, almost it's like a value that you just automatically use when you get involved in doing anything of safety. When you're thinking about it, am I empathizing for people or am I empowering people? Am I being engaged and being an example for people when I'm doing this job? And am I willing to share it? Am I willing to go beyond just my team or myself and not being selfish, but doing it with more people and seeing other people become just as successful as I am in my safety environment? So that was really, you know, something that really drives. So you'll always see empathizing, power, engaging, and enlarging because all of those things are really like the core values, the core principles of the Safety Man movement. And so even in this um, safety podcast at Safety Church, it's another way for me to care. It's empathizing with people. It's engaging with people. It's empowering people. And then it's enlarging uh, a group of people. It is an enlarging of the effort of other people because I believe that there are people out there who have faith and who believe that, hey, safety and salvation are synonymous, right? And because we really are saving people, right? Saving them physically, but then we have the gospel that will help save people spiritually. And so this safety church was just a forum where I could come and bring both of those things together and challenge and inspire and encourage people to do more as safety saints and soldiers to become uh, all that you can be all that you want to be right and 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 be more like i feel like if we as safety professionals can work on ourselves and make ourselves better we are better people for those people who we're caring for if we can work on ourselves we can be better people for the people that we are helping right the real, the real reason for you to even work on and become a better person is so that you're a better person in society, so that you are, you make a better difference and an impact on the people that's around you. It's never really selfish, right? I mean, of course, it helps you, obviously, because you're you and you're living your life, but it's not just intended for you. We're trying to help other people around us. So this gives us the opportunity to grow, right? And I want to help you grow as a professional in safety and as a professional who has faith in God. Or maybe you're a person who don't necessarily have a faith and you just come in to just kind of see what's going on and see if there's something that you can get with. Listen, it's going to help your character no matter who you are, guy, right? So join in with us 
whenever these podcasts drop. I hope you guys will be keep on staying in there with us. It's going to be a good time. But why did I do this really is for the people who have that conviction, who know that, hey, safety is important, but I also I love the Lord and I want to make sure that I'm able to shine my light. I want to be a salt to the world. I want to make sure that people know that I care, that I that I love the Lord, but that I also just love people in general. And it doesn't matter what your title is to be. And you don't have to have a title to be to participate in safety, to save lives, to change uh, people's perspectives, to do the things that uh, people are expecting you to do. Right. You can you can you can change the world and you can make a difference. Right. And I want to encourage you and inspire you to change the world and make a difference. So here we are here at Safety Church, guys. I don't want to take too much time, but I want to make sure that I covered a number of things so that you guys understood kind of where we're coming from um, and kind of why I'm doing this. So another thing that I wanted to try to accomplish with Safety Church is, again, creating a community of believers, right? Building up on that community because there's people who are out here who have faith and who are in safety as well. And we get discouraged, but I want us to come out of our shells. I want us to be bold about who we are in safety and in Christ, right? We need to be bold and let people see that there's a difference about us. There's something different about us. The way that we care, the way that we talk, the way that we uh, interact with people. I want us people to understand that, hey, we we aren't the same, right? We are not of this world. We are different. We we come from another place. We are royal priesthood for a chosen generation, right? That's who we are. We're safety professionals, yes, but we are so much more than that. And I'm so excited that you guys are here. And I'm hoping that I can encourage you on your journey to shine your light in the midst of a dark place. Like when I wanted to start this whole thing, even the safety church thing, I've done um, the safety prayers before. Um, before I did a safety prayer, again, we had to, I have faith in safety, um, online event the other day. And I wanted you guys to understand, I was like, man, we, it wasn't just like easy for me to do. Right. I, I, I was like, man, maybe these people are going to say stuff or maybe people are not even going to respond. And people haven't been responding like crazy like hey oh there's opportunity that i've been looking for but i feel like people may be a little afraid and a little nervous about the unknown right or is it cool or see how things are gonna go is it gonna flop is it gonna are people gonna join in how's how's everything gonna turn out right people have these different ideas and these different concepts when something comes up that's out of the normal but that's what we do here to safety Memo. we try to change things up we we don't like to keep things the same but we want to make a difference where we're going right we want to make a difference and some and a lot of times making a difference means doing something totally different that other people are just afraid to do right and so I knew I had this conviction. I was like, man, I know that there has to be other people out there in the safety world that has um, faith in God who who just are would love to would love to connect with others. So I want to create a community. I want to create an environment, a a forum for us to have discussions, for us to sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron. So safety professionals can sharpen safety professionals. That's the reason you go to safety conferences, to get better, to learn more. But I believe that we can learn more even from just policies and procedures to prayer and power, guys. I love making things rhyme, so I just came off the top of my head. But I, I believe that we can get things going together and we can make a real impact in the safety industry if we just become better representatives of who Christ is in the safety industry. And I believe that you should know of who is available or who's uh, believing in faith in the safety industry. Those people who are, may, you may even be around you, you just had no clue that they were believers or you had no clue that, hey man, they, they were even trying to walk. And again, everybody's not, um, on the same level. And that's fine. And that's fantastic. I want to meet anybody who's trying to grow, right? Grow in this industry and grow in the Lord. Sometimes our, our faith is impacted by, um, the things that we deal with on a daily basis. Some of you deal with some amazing things. Some of you deal with some horrific things and different types of situations. And I believe that we need encouragement as we're dealing with these things. Fatality is not a, a, a soft subject. It's not something that everybody can just deal with, dealing with all of those different injuries and people's lives changing all of a sudden. How do you how do you lose and stay encouraged? Right. How do you how do you lose uh, uh, whether it's um, uh, senses or whether it's a family member or a person? How do you do these things and keep going on? How do I 
stay in this stay encouraged in this in type of environment well i'm here for you guys call me hey, terry gray your safety pastor i'm here for you guys we can do this and i hope that you guys will stay encouraged from all of the podcasts that are going to come forth from this one i hope you are willing to jump on board and attend safety church guys because we're here for you we all have a part to play in this thing guys not just safety but in salvation do your part you may not lead people to christ you may not lead everybody to the lord but you have a part to play as in leading them to the right down the right path that's the same thing we do we lead people down the right path we try to direct them to um making the correct choice when they're facing a safety decision we want them to make the correct choice man i'm not going to do this or i'm not going to uh you know make this wrong choice or sacrifice or take this shortcut in order to try to save 10 minutes right and it's the same way we want people to understand we're trying to we're trying to guide people to make the right choices you may not be the one who um tangibly saves their lives or in there to save them in the moment but the words that you say the attitude that you give people how you interact with people impacts how people respond so you do have a part to play in how people uh will in their safety on an everyday basis and it's the same way as you are interacting with people as a christian as a representative of christ they'll see your light the word that you share today you may not lead them to christ but things that you tell them may inspire them or make them think twice and meet someone else down down the line right we do watering but god gets the increase right we just water the plants until they grow into the place that they're supposed to be it's the same thing as safety and it's the same thing for salvation guys so what i want you to know is that there is major parallels between safety and salvation and i just want to bring those things to the light to help inspire you and encourage you on your everyday challenges that you face as a safety professional as a safety soldier and saint within the safety industry guys and it's going to be great so we're going to continue there we're going to continue sharing those type of things to keep you guys encouraged and keep you guys inspired if you're a person who's building your character if you're a person who's building um your, your relationship with god and you're trying to get closer to him but you're also trying to let your light shine through in the safety industry i'm here to help you guys i'm here to coach you guys through that i'm held to, i'm here to try to give you some pointers trying to give you some tips on dealing with people i love people i mean i love talking to people i love dealing with people i love working with people it's, it's just great it's kind of you know a part of me i'm a i have a empathizing in me that is great which is really the first point in the safety man movement if you remember but i thank you guys again for joining me i'm excited about just being able to share with you guys my heart about the safety man movement um safety church podcast so guys listen i've been rambling on because i've just been so excited about everything that we're gonna that we're this journey that we're about to go on together i just was kind of sharing some things you know it's this is not how the regular program is gonna be this is really episode zero again just kind of introducing myself introducing you guys to the concept of the whole safety church and hoping that you guys are excited about it and will join in with me as we are um heading down this journey on down this path to become better safety professionals and better um saints so a couple of things that i want to share with you guys before we get out of here you can go to the safety man movement website and you can get yourself a i attended safety church t-shirt right i want you to go um to the link that is gonna be associated with the description um it's gonna take you straight to my website so that you can go there and you can join in again we have uh i attended safety church t-shirts that you guys can go and purchase at the um, safety man movement website safetymanmovement.com there's other safety man movement gear that you can pick up there if you just want to um, get some of that safety man movement swag but again thank you guys for joining me here at safety church we're going to be back it's going to be fun guys it's going to be great and i just hope that you continue to tune in with me again guys thank you for joining me Terry Gray, your host here, your safety pastor, and I hope that you enjoyed yourself, and I hope that you will come back and join us again. God bless you guys. Stay safe.